Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. This video is about some of the functional relations satisfied by the die logarithm function, and it includes an evaluation of the value of the die logarithm for the eight arguments, zero, plus or minus one, one half, minus phi, which is the golden ratio, one plus square root five over two, phi to the minus one, phi to the minus two, and minus phi to the minus one. The canonical integral representation for the die logarithm is minus the integral from zero to x, log one minus u over u du. If we put x equal to zero, then we get zero. What is the die logarithm of one? We copy this integral here, replacing x by one. First step is to replace u by one minus u. So the integrand now is log u divided by one minus u. The next step is to write down one over one minus u. u is in the open interval from zero to one. So we can do the series expansion and write down this as one plus u plus u squared plus u cubed and so forth. Here we have a summation, g from zero to infinity, u to the power g. Then we interchange the order of integration and summation. Note that if we combine the negative with the logarithm, then the integrand is real valued and non-negative. So by Tonelli, we are justified in swapping the order of infinite sum and integration. We now integrate term by term. We need to know generally what is the result of this integral from zero to one of z to the alpha, where alpha is a real number strictly greater than minus one log z dz. Any log here is to the base e. We can do this integration by parts. This is one over alpha plus one integral from zero to one log z dz to the alpha plus one. There will be a term log z, z to the alpha plus one, and then we need to take the limit as z tends to zero from above and as z tends to one from below. Log one is equal to zero. So the challenge is to get the limit as z approaches zero from above. We can write down this product as log z divided by z to the power minus between brackets alpha plus one. If z approaches zero from above, then numerator tends to minus infinity and the denominator tends to infinity. We are in an infinity over infinity situation, which can be handled using L'Hopital's rule. By L'Hopital's rule, the limit of this ratio is the limit of the ratio of the first derivatives. The derivative of log z is one over z. The derivative of z to the minus alpha plus one is minus alpha plus one z minus alpha minus two. We end up with the limit of z to the power minus one plus alpha plus two. That's z to the alpha plus one. Recall that alpha is greater than minus one. So this is a positive power. As z tends to zero, this will go to zero. Thus, this integral here is equal to minus one over alpha plus one integral from zero to one z to the alpha dz, which is minus one over alpha plus one squared. If we apply this result here, this integral is minus one over g plus one all squared. The die logarithm evaluated at one is equal to summation g from zero to infinity one over g plus one squared minus one by minus one. That's one, and this is the sum of the reciprocals of the squares of the positive integers, that's zeta of two, which is pi squared over six. And we know that the die logarithm function at x equal one is equal to zeta of two, which is pi squared over six. One minus x squared can be written as the product one minus x times one plus x. Apply the natural logarithm to both sides. Log one minus x squared is the log of this product, which can be written as log one minus x plus log one plus x. Divide both sides by x. Now integrate both sides from zero to x after multiplying by minus one. By definition, this is the die logarithm. What about this integral and that integral? If we start with this one, to make things look like the die logarithm, we do the change of variables. V is equal to u squared, so u is the square root of V. And in this case here, du over u is dv over v times one half. When u is zero, v is zero. When u is x, v is equal to x squared. On the left-hand side, we have minus the integral from zero to x squared, log one minus v divided by two v dv. This is the die logarithm of x squared multiplied by one half. What about this one? Let's do the change. u is equal to minus w. du over u is dw over w. When u is zero, w is zero. When u is x, w is minus x. So we have this integral and this is the die logarithm of minus x our conclusion is that one half the die logarithm of x squared is equal to the die logarithm of x plus the die logarithm of minus x one way to use this result is to obtain the die logarithm evaluated at x equal to minus one the idea is use this functional relation with x equal to one we get that one half the die logarithm of one and here we have the die logarithm of one, and here we have the die logarithm of minus one. We can move this to the other side. 
to obtain that the die logarithm evaluated at minus one is minus one half of the die logarithm evaluated at one. But this guy is zeta of two pi squared over six. So now we have this value here, minus pi squared over 12. Let's start again by the canonical integral representation of the die logarithm. Let's do integration by parts. So du over u is d log u. Thus we have minus log u log one minus u. We need to take the limit as u tends to zero plus and u tends to x from below. It is not shown here, but we can also apply L'Hopital's rule and show that the limit of this quantity as u tends to zero from the positive side is equal to zero. Then we have this integral where we can employ the substitution u equal to one minus v. In terms of v, we have an integral from one minus x to one log one minus v over v dv. Note that this integral here can be written as minus the integral from zero to one minus minus the integral from zero to one minus x. In other words, this term here can be written as the die logarithm of one minus the die logarithm of one minus x. And we have the product of these two logarithms. We know that this is pi squared over six. So our result is that the die logarithm evaluated at x plus the die logarithm evaluated at one minus x. This is pi squared over six minus log x times log one minus x. And this can be used to obtain the die logarithm of one half. Just take x to be equal to one half. Then these two guys together will give us double the die logarithm of one half. And on the other side, we will have log one half times log one half. So this is minus log two times minus log two. That's log two squared. Dividing by two, we get that the die logarithm of one half is pi squared over 12 minus one half of the square of log two. Let's differentiate the die logarithm of minus x over one minus x. So we need to differentiate this integral here. Applying Leibniz rule for differentiation under the integral sign, this derivative is given by the derivative of the upper limit of integration with respect to x. This derivative is minus one times one minus x minus minus x and the derivative of the denominator is minus one. So this is minus one plus x minus x, the numerator is minus one. And in the denominator, we have one minus x squared. This minus one is this minus one and this minus one over one minus x all squared, that's the derivative of the upper limit of integration with respect to x. And then we need to take the integrand and replace the dummy variable of integration by the upper limit. We need to replace u by minus x over one minus x. Here we get log one minus minus x over one minus x, that's one plus x over one minus x, and this is log one minus x, and in the numerator we have one minus x plus x, that's one. This is minus log one minus x. We have minus one, minus one, minus one, minus one. Those give us a product of one. And the remaining terms are log one minus x. And then when we multiply this by this, we get in the denominator x times one minus x. And this ratio here can be written as one over x plus one over one minus x. This is what we get if we differentiate the die logarithm of minus x over one minus x. Now, suppose that x is strictly less than one and let's integrate both sides from zero to x. On the left-hand side, we get the die logarithm of minus x over one minus x. Recall that the die logarithm of zero is zero. On the right-hand side, we have this integral, which is the die logarithm, but without the minus sign. So this is minus the die logarithm of x. Then we have the integral from zero to x of log one minus u over one minus u du. And this is the integral from zero to x of d minus one half log one minus u squared. If u is equal to zero, we get log one, which is zero. The surviving term is minus one half times the square of the logarithm of one minus x. That's another functional relation satisfied by the die logarithm. We have these two previous results. Let's eliminate the die logarithm of x. I will write down the die logarithm of minus x over one minus x. Rather than writing this term here, I write one half the die logarithm of x squared minus the die logarithm of minus x. On the right hand side, we have this term. In this expression, set x equal to minus phi to the minus one, where phi is the golden ratio, one plus square root five over two. The golden ratio phi satisfies phi squared is equal to phi plus one. Again, we go to this expression. We replace x by minus phi to the minus one on both sides. From here, we get log one plus phi to the minus one. 
this is log phi plus one over phi, and phi plus one is phi squared. So this is equal to log phi. The right hand side is minus one half times the square of log phi. What about this phi to the minus one over one plus phi to the minus one? If we multiply the numerator and denominator by phi, we get one over one plus phi. But this is phi squared. The argument here is phi to the minus two. What we have is the dilogarithm of phi to the minus two plus half the dilogarithm of phi to the minus two. That's three over two times the dilogarithm of phi to the minus two. Then we have minus the dilogarithm of phi to the minus one. And on the right hand side, we have minus one half log phi squared. If we can obtain another expression involving the dilogarithm of phi to the minus two and the dilogarithm of phi to the minus one, then we can solve the two equations and get each one of those guys. The good news is that we can do so because we have also this functional relation. If in this functional relation, we set x equal to phi to the minus two, then here we will have the dilogarithm of phi to the minus two. Here we will have the dilogarithm of one minus phi to the minus two. But this is phi squared minus one over phi squared. And phi squared is phi plus one. This is equal to phi to the minus one. Here we have log phi to the minus two, and then one minus x is log phi to the minus one. That's minus two times minus one log phi squared. That's two times the square of log phi. And this is our second equation involving the dilogarithm of phi to the minus two and the dilogarithm of phi to the minus one. Using these two equations, we can just add them to eliminate the dilogarithm of phi to the minus one. We get five over two, the dilogarithm of phi to the minus two on the left hand side. On the right hand side, we get zeta of two minus five over two times the square of log phi. Multiplying both sides by two over five, we get this result that the dilogarithm of phi to the minus two, where phi is the golden ratio, is pi squared divided by 15 minus the square of log phi. We can now use either this equation or that equation to obtain that the dilogarithm of phi to the minus one is pi squared over 10 minus the square of log phi. Let's go back to this functional relation and set x equal to phi to the minus two. This is what we get. From the previous page, we know that one minus phi to the minus two, that's phi to the minus one. What about this? This is equal to minus one divided by phi squared minus one, and phi squared is one plus phi. So this is minus one over phi, that's minus phi to the minus one. If we use this substitution, we get that the dilogarithm of minus phi to the minus one plus the dilogarithm of phi to the minus two, which we have already obtained, is equal to minus one half times the square of log phi. So we can get this guy. The dilogarithm of minus phi to the minus one is minus pi squared divided by 15 plus one half times the square of log phi. Let's use this functional relation again, but with x equal to phi to the minus one. We have the dilogarithm of minus phi to the minus one over one minus phi to the minus one plus the dilogarithm of phi to the minus one is equal to minus one half log one minus phi to the minus one whole square. This is phi minus one over phi. If we multiply numerator and denominator by phi, we get phi squared minus phi over phi squared. This is phi plus one. In the numerator, we have one. So this is phi to the minus two. This logarithm here is the log of phi to the minus two, which is minus two log phi. If we square, we get four times the square of log phi. The right hand side becomes minus two times the square of log phi. What is this term here? This is minus one over phi minus one. Multiplying numerator and denominator by phi, this is minus phi over phi squared minus phi. And this is phi plus one. So this is minus phi. We have the dilogarithm of minus phi, which we are interested in, plus the dilogarithm of phi to the minus one obtained on the previous page. This is equal to minus two times log phi squared. Because we know this, we can obtain the dilogarithm of minus phi as minus pi squared over 10 minus the square of log phi. These are the eight values that we have obtained for the dilogarithm function.